architecture is really the art and science of turning fiction into fact. Sometimes uh, kind of real architectural life interferes with intellectual architectural life. There is no such thing as architecture. Hello everyone, this is Vikram Prakash and you are listening to Architecture Talk. We are continuing a series of conversations I'm holding with uh, a second generation of Indian modernists in uh, dialogue uh, with my book uh, on the life and work of my father, Aditya Prakash. And today I'm speaking to Firoza Jhabwala, who is the daughter of uh, Cyrus Jhabwala, a fabulous uh, Indian modernist who practiced uh, out of New Delhi in the 1950s, 60s and 70s uh, before he moved to New York. We are having a conversation as uh, children of these architects uh, and comparing notes on the lives of our fathers and the impact that they had uh, and the times and the milieus that they belong to and what the legacy is of that time. Cyrus Jhabwala, like my father, studied in England and then came back to uh, practice in India uh, and joined to the modernist cause. And like my father, was also an academic, uh, uh, part, uh, leading the School of Planning and Architecture in New Delhi. Uh, what is interesting about Cyrus is, uh, of course, that he uh, was married to Ruth Prabhat Jhabwala, who uh, was a German-Jewish emigre in England who moved to Delhi and then became part of the, uh, the, the screenwriting uh, member of the Merchant Ivory Films duo. And later on, after she moved to uh, New York, was um, the writer of a series of award-winning films, uh, including A Room with a View, uh, uh, and so on. So uh, we have a little bit of mention of that, but uh, more overall we discuss uh, the moments from the 50s, 60s, and what it felt like to be a part of the enterprise of building India uh, in a global context uh, at that time. I uh, hope you enjoy this conversation. Here we go. So first yes. of all, welcome to Architecture Talk. And Thank you. Nice to meet you. As well. It's very nice to meet you. Strange way, I feel like we are anciently connected, although we have uh-huh. never spoken. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I was going to say related. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> almost, <Yeah>. almost. <laughs> So, yeah, so it sounds like our fathers had parallel careers, mine in Delhi and yours in Chandigarh. Yeah, I think very parallel careers. I mean, they both uh, uh, grew up in, uh, you know, in colonial India with nationalist backgrounds. Yes. Uh, Moved to London. I think your fathers moved in 46. My father moved in 47, Mm -hmm. got his ARIBA. Yes. And they both came back uh, and they both, uh, well, my father joined the Chandigarh Capital Project. What year was that? 52. Okay. Uh But then went on to be the principal of the Chandigarh College of Architecture. So he was an academic like your father at SPA for a long time. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, my father, well, was your father practicing at the same time? He practiced after retirement, but he built a lot of structures, you know, as uh, the architect in Chandigarh. Then he designed the agricultural universities as part of the Green Revolution in the 1960s. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then he designed a lot of theaters. That was the other thing they had in common. Was that uh, theater, big time. My father was big into theater. He designed a lot of theaters. He acted in plays, designed sets. Yeah, well, my father, uh, I think it was a, you know, a national time. Mm -hmm. Theater is a form of self-expression. Yeah, yeah. And so they were very involved with that. My father's partner, R.G. Anand, was also very involved with theater. And as you know, my mother was a writer. Yes, of course. So he was very involved with literature. But not all of them were. Not all of them at that generation were. 
even in the architectural education, he would encourage a lot of theater within the SBA. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, a, a number of them went off into other fields. For example, Arundhati Roy. Yes, yes, was yes. Was a sir. student. Was yeah. A student. Yeah. <laughs> She's yeah, not I, a I, the, the, the character played by Roshan Shet was a, famously based on your father, I think. Yes, I know. But I didn't buy <laughs> I saw it. In, in <laughs> Annie gives them those ones. <laughs> the funny thing was they never met my mother, but somehow she imagined her. <laughs> I found it on YouTube and, and watched it. Yes. Oh, you did? You did? You did? <laughs> yes. You know, I was, I was going through this amazing booklet that you have put together, and thank you for doing that. I mean, it's such an important document. Uh, you did, your sisters were more of me. Yeah, yes, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. we all three worked together on it. And it yeah. was very helpful when I was working on the website. Right. So right, right, uh, right. yeah, a lot of information. Well, uh, it's not just my sister, um, also students. Um, mm -hmm. We are in close contact with a number of his students still. Oh, uh, I'm good yeah. friends with the Chisti family. Uh, Iftakar Chisti is an right. architect in Bombay, I mean, in Delhi. Right. So I was good friends with his brother in New York, and then I just sort of reconnected with the family I had known if I in, in Delhi. Yeah. And so after our, our father passed away, it was his suggestion that why don't you go, you know, um, we need to take photos of his work. And luckily mm -hmm. we did because uh, a lot of the residences are now torn down. Yeah. yeah, yeah Delhi yeah. Has, is uh, just completely new. Completely changed. Yeah. All the modernism is coming down. Many of my father's buildings have been torn down. Mm. And you know, Rajivals Hall of Nations came down. And uh, so that era of modernism is coming down rapidly. That, uh, that generation is being erased uh, under yeah. the new administration. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, we could get, that's a whole other story. Whole other story. <laughs> the latest is the Rajpat. Rajput. Yes. Delhi Unbelievable. is Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. So you but you live in LA now and uh, but you grew up in uh, Delhi? You must I grew up in Delhi. Yeah. Very close to my father. Yeah. Um, okay. my mother was also a busy professional. You were and the gone. youngest, right, right? Yes, I was the youngest. I was yeah. the baby. I was left home with them. Uh -huh. By then, my mother was leaving a lot because she had her work in New York. She really felt a lot more fulfilled working with Merchant Ivory and her yeah. publishers were in New York and England. Right. So my father and I spent a lot of time together. <laughs> Got to know each other really well. Poor guy was left with a teenage daughter, you know, <laughs> talking back to him. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but well, that's uh, lucky for you. You got close to your father. Uh, uh, that's yeah. a great feeling, no? I was very close to both my parents uh -huh. um, right to the end. Of course, as we get older, we understand them better. And so as I got closer and closer to them. And mm. of course, my father ended his life with me. Yeah. yeah. Um, in my home, we told him after my mother passed away, we said, yeah. you really need to one of us wants to be with you so which one would you like to choose and he chose me because he wanted you know my father was a very caring person he always felt very responsible for all of us and uh -huh. he really wanted to close his affairs before he he went uh -huh. and most of it by now was in america so he stayed here right right yeah. Right, 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 yeah. right yeah no my mother is here too now i mean oh, okay my father passed away in 2008 uh -huh. you know, in india and then my mother lived on for uh, seven, eight years in India on her own. She was yeah. younger th than my father. So now uh, was she but, working? She did she have a did she, she, no, she was she was a homemaker. Uh -huh. But now she's here. She is with my sister in uh, Texas. Oh, okay. in Dallas. Yeah. Okay. And probably uh, enjoying herself. Yeah, she's she's fine. You know, I mean she's she she's mentally she's all there. Absolutely hundred percent. Uh -huh. uh, but walks around with a walker, but uh, not that well. Yeah, so, that but, what uh, my my father was completely there. Both my parents very yeah. sharp, but the body, you know, in a way they watch their own bodies going. That's right. So uh, yeah, it's not easy, but very sharp. Um, yeah, and I mean, what's amazing about my father was he was a very. Uh, 
he would adjust to the situation. Mm. So, uh, and he made five big moves in his life. Really? And, yeah, and LA was his last one. Well, uh, he was born in Bombay, and yeah. then he went to London, yeah. and then he went to Delhi, yeah, and then he went to New York, right, and then he moved to LA. So, um, yeah, he was quite a so a global Parsi Baba, huh? <laughs> he was <a> global Parsi. <laughs> <laughs> he was the well, he was the husband of a refugee. Yes, I think one yes, yes, a refugee. You're, yeah. Yes. Well, he was Jewish. German no, she, emigre, right? She was Polish German, yeah. Polish and German. They were, they were refugees in England. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's where he met her. You know, that's so, a funny thing. You know, there are two things about our stories which are parallel. First is that, you know, my father was also really wanted to be an artist. He uh -huh. was a full-time painter. In fact, if I show you, I have a lot of his artwork over here. Uh, Wonderful. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, he... Yeah. Uh, the book I just published on, on his says mm -hmm. his art, architecture, and urbanism. He really wanted to be an artist, but, uh -huh. you know, there was no way for a man of his generation at that time who was going to be an artist. You have to be uh, a yeah. proper yeah. profession, correct? And, and uh, maintain a family, basically. And maintain a family. Right. You had to sort of run the family. Right, exactly. So did and, your father paint a lot after he retired? Yes, yes, he painted life. a lot. He painted a lot his whole life. Well, mm -hmm. he started painting early in his life and then he was working in Glasgow for a bit. So he went to the Glasgow School of Art in the evenings. Uh -huh. And then he came back to Chandigarh and for a decade he didn't paint too much. But then mid-60s onwards he started painting and once he retired his life was painting. Painting in theatre. Uh -huh. uh, right. So, uh -huh. so... I have about uh, over a hundred paintings and about six, seven hundred drawings of his. Wow. Uh, yeah. This uh, website came about because uh, he brought a number of boxes with him and yeah. uh, now I just didn't want to open them. So, so you have so, his archive, his entire archive? I have all his art here. Most of it. Uh, some of it is in India. Okay. Um, especially from the last book. He published three books of uh, sketches yes. and paintings. Yeah, yeah. And all the, uh, what, he would scan them to uh, India. And I think he left the originals there. So those are over there. But anyway, when I opened the, well, <laughs> my sister moved him out here. Mm. And they, he lived in a one bedroom. They lived in a one bedroom apartment. They really downsized. They liked yeah. their little space. Yeah. He would work in the bedroom and he would work in the living room in the mornings. Yeah. So anyway, when she, my sister moved him, uh, he's, uh, the night before they were coming, he said, well, look under the mattress. And she did. <laughs> she, she called me, she said, what am I going to do with all these drawings? All these drawings on the mattress. This is where he kept them. <laughs> under the mattress? <laughs> under the mattress. And in the closets, the, he was really into little storage spaces. He, oh. he was an interior designer and he yeah. loved to uh, design interiors for storage. So they had this, these two big walk-in closets. They, they were, uh, there were suitcases full of drawings and uh, also and under his mattress. Mm -hmm. So anyway, <laughs> they left the apartment as is. And then my sister went back and packed up and uh, all these boxes arrived over here. So mm -hmm. I finally opened them and just these wonderful drawings, uh, sketches and paintings and right. just, yeah, uh, uh, just, he really it, wanted to be an artist, didn't he? I mean, he, he did. He said, my mother would say, Kansi, so what are you going to eat if you're yeah, an yeah, artist? Yeah, yeah. Okay, because they so. were also, <laughs> well, I'm sure you <laughs> Same thing. No, same thing. But here is the one difference that came down uh, between our fathers. Is Here's the interesting thing is, you know, I have all my father's uh, diaries, journals from... Uh, uh -huh. 1945 to 52, 53. They are now in all in the archives, in mm -hmm. the Canadian Center for Architecture archives. So they're publicly accessible. Uh, but uh, the interesting thing is, yeah, you know, which, he, which archive? Which archive was it? The Canadian Center. The Canadian Center for Architecture in oh. Montreal. Oh, oh, I see. It's a massive architecture archive. So uh -huh. they took all my father's papers and drawings. Okay. Architectural drawings. Uh huh. And uh -huh. 
So, and I don't know where your father's archives are. You know. Well, that's a good question. We just signed an agreement. I mean, I'm talking about a few weeks ago. First, uh, they were, we bought a big piece of furniture and just put all the plans in there. For, yeah. uh, again, my sister open, started opening all the drawers. And yeah, yeah, okay. He had kept every plan, everything. So good. it's all there. And then we just signed with SEPT. Okay, uh, SEPT archives. Yes, yes. Okay, yeah. fine. So yeah. we're just, uh, we, uh, you know, we would like to use them for research, educational purposes. They said they would, you know, I mean, it's a new, the, it's the only architecture archive in India. That's right. And That's so right. That's in right. a way, yeah. Yeah. We decide, because my, um, we didn't spend too much looking, time looking, because my sister is moving and we really needed to get. Yeah, and get she's in Ahmedabad anyway, right? Uh, she's in Delhi, actually. Oh, Delhi. Oh, okay. She's oh, in okay. Delhi. She works out of Ahmedabad, uh -huh. but uh, uh, now mainly in Delhi. Oh, um, interesting. Yeah, yeah. So, so what I was saying was, you know, I was looking through my father's journals, and what uh -huh. I found out was uh, he had a long relationship with a German Jewish emigre woman while he was in London. Now, what year was this? Forty-seven to fifty. And he was in London. Yeah, it better uh, not have been my mother. No, it wasn't your mother. <laughs> I know. <'Cause> my <laughs> no. father, you know what he did? <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> you know <about> this. <laughs> That's why I'm asking the year. Because my mother left. Uh, um, I mean, he met her. Uh -huh. And in his mind, he was going, he, he had met the one. And uh -huh. in his mind, he was going to go back to India and um, set up all of this, uh, you know, set up a way to earn a living for her, mm -hmm. to bring her there. Mm -hmm. But he never told her this. He left her there for two years, didn't write to her nothing. So oh, she really? thought, well, I guess it's over. <laughs> and then he did, wrote and said, well, do you want to marry me now? And she said, okay. And <laughs> that, <That's it. laughs> that, was, that was 1951, they got married. Yeah. I think my father would have been so jealous of your dad because uh, I know my father wanted to marry her, and but his uh -huh. family wouldn't allow it. His family wouldn't allow yeah, it. Yeah, oh, yeah. my goodness. So, mm -hmm. and now I think about it because I remember, you know, my dad, you know, Jabwala was a well known name in our house, you know, Jab, you know, part of the circle, but I never knew this sort of a. Uh, I, I wonder if they ever talked about that. Uh, well, you know, he came back and talked to people who had foreign wives because yeah. he wanted to know what it would be like for her. Uh, and he understood that she would be very dependent on him. Right, 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 right. So, right. but here he had no strong, he did not have very strong, he was very uh, strong family ties in the sense that their family was... Um, you know, his father was a, a trade unionist and spent mm. seven years in jail. He's a communist, yeah. He, um, no, I don't think he's actually a communist. He was a socialist at least, socialist, but he was yeah, a trade unionist. Yeah. And yeah. Um, anyway, uh, so I think with a big family like that, this all just sort of went their own ways. There was yeah, close. Yeah. My father looked out for his sisters throughout yeah. his whole life. He looked out for his sisters and he kept in touch with his brothers, but they were... The family, he never listened to what his mother had to tell him. Right. I mean, That's education good. was important, but they, there was no hold on, on, on them. And they, a lot of them ended up marrying uh, foreigners. Really? Which is, for that, generation, that generation. That generation. That oh, generation. Mm. I think the, the sisters, yeah, three of them married in India. Oh. I think only two of them married, three of, no, three of them married Parsis. The rest all married outside, which for Parsis is very not yeah. good. Yeah, not yeah, good. We yeah. Are not, we're not we are not supposed to marry out, and so no, yeah. we were not brought up in the Parsi tradition. Also, right, right, right yeah. Right. So he they, he didn't have that kind of hold, but uh, he did have a strong sense that yes, he was Indian and he wanted to go back and work in India. And, and did he want to go and work in Nehruvian India? Was he had seemed to have a complicated relationship with Nehru? He, uh, yeah, here's something interesting. He okay. believed in uh, uh, you know uh, developing a national character of architecture, but he didn't believe in imitations. Mm. So he he said we have to work with 
purpose that we have. And, you know, they made, they used to work with stone and they had domes in the Mughal architecture. Mm -hmm. Now we are working with, uh, you know, concrete. And if you're just going to start putting concrete chhatris on buildings just for the sake of, that it look uh, Indian, that's sham architecture. And mm -hmm. that was his thinking. Yeah. And um, Nehru did not agree with this at all. And of course, Nehru won out on this one. So my father did no government buildings till Nehru died. Yeah, and I then read he that. started. Yeah, I yeah. read that. That sounds unusual because Chandigarh is completely modernist. I mean. Right. But when was it built? Uh, 52 to 63. It's a thoroughbred Nehru project. Yeah. Maybe in De he wanted something in Delhi. Now that is interesting. Why would that be? Why would he let Le Corbusier uh, design mm. a whole city, a whole town? What and I'm asking is: this, Was this like a commonplace growing up in the in the old days in your home? A sort of a, a critique of Nehru at home. Or, or is this sort of things you have learned uh, later? Well, I put two and two together. My parents were not that fond of Nehru. Mm. And I put two and two together after, as when I grew up, that I'd say, this is what happened. This is probably what happened. I mean, I have a great admiration for Nehru. I mean, yeah. I feel like he was India. I mean, you look at what happened around us. I mean, Pakistan yeah. and uh, Sri Lanka and Burma, all their leaders died right after independence, yeah. whereas Nehru survived. And, uh, you know, we had a great, I mean, have a great nation, a democracy yeah. that developed. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so I never quite understood why my parents were a little bit resentful. My parents had a very strong sense of their own uh, creative uh, 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 you know, they, they had a lot of confidence in their creativity mm -hmm. and they would stand by what they thought and said. Mm. So, um, you know, and they would support each other in that. Mm. And I suppose that's what happened. But right after Nehru passed away, uh, my father did a lot of uh, big yeah. building. Yeah. He, it's not that he didn't like uh, like uh, Mughal ornamentation. He loved Mughal architecture. No, he loved Mughal architecture. All his drawings uh, are all Mughal architecture. And, yeah. and uh, in a sense, the heat and dust is not is sort of a uh, Mughal romantic nostalgia piece, is it not? It is. Well, I mean, I, uh, yes, it is. I mean, they did, he spent a lot of time going to places to look at these monuments. In fact, it was a yearly expedition with the School of Planning and Architecture that the students did go to the buildings. My father loved Fatehpur Sikri. Is and it, so, the, yeah. yes. And so they would spend time there and he would ask them to look at the construction. He would ask them to look at the spaces, look at how it came in. He would have them sketch and draw. And, you know, as uh, we got older, he would take us with him. Mm -hmm. So we got, that's how we got to know some of the students. Uh, personally, we became friends with them. Can you give me a little bit more sense of the, because I remember, you know, growing up and there would be these arguments, heated arguments in our living room my dad and other people, you know, arguing about the Nehruvian legacy and its failures and successes. Well, of course, this was Chandigarh, the big Nehruvian city. Uh -huh. But I, I'm just wondering, what was the uh, character of the critique? Uh, or, or well, some, what, what do you remember? Yeah. I think it was over the Ashoka Hotel. Now, Nehru, mm. Nehru wanted it to be, you know, this beacon of inviting, uh, you know, uh, uh, a, a place where uh, diplomats would stay and uh -huh. foreign dignitaries would stay. And so I think he put out, uh, you know, a call for designs. Mm. And um, my father gave his design and it wasn't accepted. For, and he was given the reason, I'm sure, that it was not... Uh, um, so this is the J.K. Chaudhary Ashoka Hotel. Uh, is that uh, yeah <laughs> the one with the <laughs> with the chatris yes yes yes, yes, yes. Oh, God, that really galled my father <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he hated those chatris yeah. yes yes so yes. and then you know i mean to extrapolate and you know what the architecture is here it's everybody's fantasy that's my house you know so <laughs> that 
what is this? <laughs> one Spanish style, one English Tudor style, one this yeah, style, one that yeah, style. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so it was all over the Ashoka Hotel. I think that's what was part of it. And so he was, he, uh, my father was not one, to, he probably told Nero off and uh, he was not one to keep his opinions to himself. Mm-hmm. I mean, this one I'm guessing, but knowing him, that's probably why. And Nehru said, well, <laughs> let me work with the people who agree with me. And I mean, that's what he said. He said national character is, uh, you know, it comes with building techniques. It comes with what's available. It, what, what is the function of the building? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not like he didn't. If you look at a lot of his buildings, he did take uh, ornamentation and ideas from the Mughal buildings. He had, uh, uh, for example, he loved Jali's. Yeah, yeah. There's so many beautiful jalis in his buildings. He used a lot of chajas to keep the um, cool air, you know, to keep, uh, to for heat and uh, colonnades. Uh, colonnades. In fact, you know, um, all this is familiar to me because we grew up in houses that he designed. And right. my sister right. Renana, all her life has lived in a place that he's designed. Yeah. So you're very so, familiar with modernism, but... But how did your how would you, how did your mother feel about growing up? Uh, no, I'm living in India. I mean, she was like doubly displaced. <laughs> well, she loved it. She loved coming. Well, you have to think about where she came from. She came from Nazi Germany. They left in 1939, and then they came to England, where they were being bombed. You know, the Battle of Britain. She lived through that, and she thought they were coming. And then, um, so then they had to live through all the rations and it's gray and it's cold. And, you know, her father had wanted to go to Israel. So, uh, and she, somehow she had a connection with the East. So um, I think she was very happy to go with him. Um, And I've heard this story from other English ladies I knew in India. Uh, My school principal was English. And same thing, she met this the Indian man and off she went and she loved it and it was sort of her muse in her muse in a way because um, you know um, my father would come home and tell stories now by the way my father really believed in architecture being a holistic sort of profession that you uh, that you give the plan and then go by you have to talk to the people and understand, uh, you know, what it is that you need. And then you have to be on the construction site. You are the one dealing with the contractors. You are the one making the adjustments. Mm. And so he had a lot of dealings with people, different people. My mother didn't go out that much, but he would come home and tell her stories about the contractors, about the families, and she would go to gatherings, picnics on Sundays. And you can see it full of, the characters in her earlier books, a lot of them are contractors, mm-hmm. uh, contractors' families. Um, and just uh, sometimes I look at the dialogue and uh, see, hear my father. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, yes. That's interesting. I mean, he was an, uh, you know, your father wrote his journal. Yeah. My father was all talk. And he they was all amazingly he was humorous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he, your father was all talk <laughs> My father was so funny that when I was doing this website, somebody said you should have just a separate section for humor. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, that's interesting. That's yeah, interesting. he was. Uh, so, but know, did they cross? Did they like try and cross architecture with all her writing or, uh, or the story of modern? They kept things separate. Uh, mm-hmm. I think. Um, I mean, we she we would go with him, all of us, and he would be doing his sketches, or, mm-hmm. you know, of the monuments, and we'd just sit there. Uh, my mother'd be reading, and I'd be doing something else, and. So we kept him company with stuff. My mother did her writing on her own. She had to have her three, four hours not talking to anybody. Oh, I see. And yeah, I, not, not too much. I think he supported her a lot in the later years as her name it sort of eclipsed everything yeah. as she became a movie persona. Yeah, so yeah. Um, yeah, so at that, after the Booker Award, things started changing. And I mean, before it was his career, Mm-hmm. And hers sort of became um, the one that uh, 
uh, took, uh, you know, uh, became yeah, yeah, sort of, one. Yeah, yeah, she became the big name. No question about that. Um, yeah, but he was okay with that. He he supported her throughout his life uh, as a writer. From, mm -hmm. As she was being rejected by all the publishers, they both had a very strong sense of what their creativity was. Uh, uh, you know, very strong confidence in what they were creating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think it also for my father, Del being in Delhi, um, it was a city of refugees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he, even though he didn't get some of Nehru's uh, projects, he got, there was a lot of work. Yeah, a lot of work, yeah. The yeah, city yeah. had to be planned. Yeah. They did a lot of them, um, you know, plans uh, within the master plans. Uh, they did a lot of um, um, uh, residential places, right. a lot, because there right. were so many refugees. They had to be housed. Right. And so he, he did a lot of that, but the character of Delhi changed. And in that sense, uh, Mr. Anand, his partner, yeah. and Tuguglani, the office manager, they were part of that community. And they, I think, did a lot of the communicating. Right, my father, right. uh, yeah. My father remained a bit of an outsider in Delhi. Yeah, right, so, right, right. Yeah, so when Mr. Anand passed away, it was really hard for him to keep the practice going. Mm, by himself, yeah by himself. He was in his 60s. His wife wanted to go to New York. And so he was going back and forth. Uh, so um, I think it, it the, the fact that he was not from, uh, the character of Delhi had changed. Mm. He was not part of it. Right. Um, I think uh, that did affect him a little bit. So how did, how did it feel to grow up in that uh you know, extremely creative, individualistic, individual, you know, such strong creative household for um, you. Well, I was the baby. So there was just like, you do what you need to do. They were just <laughs> doting parents. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, of the, my, uh, well, uh, my sister is an architect. And then became oh. a planner for the yeah, crown. Yeah. Uh, crown uh, for in, she lives in England. Okay. Yeah, yeah. She so she's on the you know she worked for the crown, which meant that uh, I suppose there's only one central agency there. It's not right. like here where the so she was sort of the appeals court if people were denied uh, building rights. Yeah, um, yeah. Okay. For many mm -hmm. reasons, and she did many different in interesting projects, but she stopped practicing architecture. Mm -hmm. She felt it wasn't quite for her. She draws yeah. a little bit. Yeah. My other sister is a you know trade unionist, unionist, and she does write. She writes. In fact, right now, she just came out with another book about housing, the Ma Mahila Housing Trust. They they do housing through Seva, mm -hmm. and so she's been involved in a lot of housing and uh, quality of life issues, sewage, and working with the you know, doing community organizations so they have trust in the government organizations right. to provide them with these uh, uh, with these amenities. Um, I suppose I'm more creative. I, I do music. I'm a musician and yeah. uh, I'm, uh, you know, I, so uh, have a little bit of the creativity, but we are not, we don't, don't consider ourselves artists like our parents. Right, right. Our parents, uh, in fact, my father, you know, he considered himself an artist first, mm -hmm. like your father. Mm -hmm. And um, he, that's why he loved to do the exhibition pavilions that he used to do. It really yeah. gave him a sense. He felt like he was doing it for an, audi an immediate audience. Mm -hmm. And he, he had, there was so much excitement when those pavilions were being designed and I mean what were they showing they were showing mines and minerals right. and whole crowds of people would come just right. uh, to see these pavilions and right. so it um and he would get a lot of he would get artists to draw murals he worked with Satish Gujral he worked mm -hmm. with Hussein even so mm -hmm. you know um I think Delhi was just a vibrant place where these things sort of mixed the I'm sure Chandigarh to theater Totally, art, totally. literature, Theater, art, all these things were mixed for my father. They were all part of one continuous spectrum. 
Right. The book I published, just published on him, and I'll send you yes. a copy, is called One Continuous Line. Uh, yeah. It's about the continuous line between uh, art, architecture, furniture, theater, photography, uh, academics, uh, and planning. Uh, right. And, and also when they practiced, I mean, it wasn't, they didn't specialize then. Landscape no, no, no. was part of it. Yeah, Interior was design part was part of it. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. But uh, just just uh, to, as an aside, I was looking at the paintings. Um, my father did very architectural painting, uh, drawings and paintings. Yes, Whereas yes. Your yes. father's is more abstract. Yes, yes. My father yes. is much more, he did all kinds of stuff. Uh, you know, very modernist, uh, you know. Beautiful, but, yes. All kinds of things. I, I'll send you the book. A lot of abstract stuff, but he did a lot of Indic stuff also. Your father was mostly drawing uh, from life, right? Architecture buildings. Yes, yes, yeah, completely. Yes. He saw himself yeah. as recording a, a, a disappearing New York also. Yeah. Because yeah. they were tearing those buildings down just as he got there. Right. In fact, right. there's a series of paintings where the, the building is up, then just the facade is up. Yeah. <laughs> and then the third one was the facade with the new building coming with up. The new <laughs> building. Yeah, I know. This is the yeah. system here. We have this too. So, uh, so how old were you when you left India? I was 18. My when mother by then was pretty uh, eager to leave. Right. So um because of her wanted, work, uh, because she uh, was very Yes. Connected. Yes. I and I think uh, she was beginning to feel too much like an you know, the critics were very hard on her in India. And I think it really finally did get very hard. You know, it's very, uh, you know, I mean, once they found out she was an Indian, they didn't like her. They thought she was too critical. Actually, her earlier books are not critical at all. Mm -hmm. They're uh, wonderful pictures of Indian life. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, that's, people were just unnecessarily mean. And you know what, things have changed so much. We just had another book come out. We compiled stories and put them out, you know, published it. And people, every reviewer was either Indian American or Indian English or Indian and all, you know, so much nostalgia. It's all it's like they rediscovered her. They thought she was wonderful and so different from the kind of reviews she used to get. Yeah. And also, you know, um, the production company she worked with, James Ivory and Merchant, uh, is my merchant based in New York. And they kept saying, come, come, we've got all these projects we need. And she did all their screenplays. Right. And she felt uh, less alien there, a lot of Jewish refugees there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, she, of course. she uh, sort of pushed me out first. I was going to Indopress College. I, see. I, was, I had gotten IP. admission. Yeah, IP, yeah. The famous <laughs> IP. My mother I went to IP. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to go to St. Stephen. My father said, no, 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 just apply to college. We have to go to New York now. My, uh, your mother wants us to go. <laughs> so I went. And uh, <coughs> then my mother said, why don't you stay here and study piano? And uh, then I'll come and join you when I can get my things together. And they found a little room in an apartment and a piano teacher who wanted to work with me. Mm. Well, this piano teacher actually didn't want to work with, but well, he did want to work with me. He was very sweet, mm. but he really also wanted to work with Merchant Ivory. And he mm. ended up being their composer I for see, I all see. their movies after, um, you know, oh, all the really? big hit movies. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's so you, how I ended up. <laughs> so you were just pathway. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> so I came to I came here. I applied to California. I I thought you know what I'd better go back to college. So I applied to California and I stayed. Uh -huh. I have an American family now, so I my children are all American, and I just yeah. Stayed. Yeah, yeah. yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, I same. I came here, grad school, and now I'm married to an American woman and kids growing up here. So that's how it is. Yeah, I think uh, you're uh, just a little bit, your father was just a little bit younger than us, just maybe two few, a few years behind my father. In probably, age, anyway. probably, yeah. He was born in 1920. Ah, yeah, my father's 24, yeah. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, my children are grown up now, so, yeah. And, uh, he, and no, he passed away at 94, wow. two, three days before his 94th birthday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And we had a big party for his 93rd birthday and students came, you know, we reconnected with students here. Mm. That's amazing. And, yes. I, um, but do you miss India? Do you go back to India or do you have I, a relationship? Yes. Yeah. I go back a lot. Um, you know what? We set up this uh, um, Cyrus Dabwala Memorial Lecture. That is mm -hmm. one. Yeah. So, um, you know, we've had these, uh, we already had three. Yeah. Ra um, let's see, Raj Rewal was the first one. Uh -huh. um, uh, Raul Merotra was the second one. Yeah. Um, the third one was Christopher Benninger. Yeah, 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 yeah. The fourth, uh, then we said, let's go international. We have a committee. Iftakar Chishti is on it. Mihir Bhart is on yeah, it. Yeah. Professor right. Mahavir is on it. And yeah. then my sister. And so we decided to go international. And we invited uh, uh, Wang Shu, you know, I'm in Lua, yeah, yeah, from China. Yeah. From China. Of yeah, course, yeah. Uh, two days before they came, India refused to have it. They shut down everything. It was right before the COVID uh, thing really hit hard. Right, right. So right. this was in February of 2020. So we had to cancel. I told Renana, um, why don't we just do it online? Come on now, we've got to do something. We're all here. Hmm. Oh, no, no, this has to be a live event. Well, this was, we just didn't know that. It would go you on. For yeah, that everything would go online for a whole year. Right, right. We just right. were not able to uh, press it. So that one didn't happen. And now we're going to have a Zoom one with uh, yeah, Ada Karmi Melame. Mm -hmm. So she's going to be speaking. And we try and do it September 27th because that's our father's birthday. Oh, and that's by the way, birthday. I listened to your Zoom talk, your talk and on your father's birthday, March 10th. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I for many years also ran a studio in Chandigarh and we would uh -huh. do something on his birthday. But this is a really good idea. I want to set up a similar lecture thing, maybe. Uh -huh. uh, how did you set it up? It's uh, like a foundation. You have an endowment in the SPA or like how do you do it? Well, we work with, well, we do. Uh, work with the School of Planning and Architecture because uh, we want, uh, the idea is to educate the students. Mm -hmm. it, the lecture is mainly for the students. We finance it. Right, right, right. Yeah, but, a lot, uh, you know, our architect, we don't, so, but when you talk about relevance, uh, relevance to what's going on in India or to the world. Um, Just uh, to India and the world. I mean, I think, I talk about it in terms of the 50s and 60s and the Nehruvian position between, you know, his non-aligned efforts, right? So that's the one thing. At that time, it was the non-aligned movement between USA and USSR. And today we have USA and China, kind of like the international. Mm -hmm. There's a new Cold War in a sense. And so how do you articulate a position which is outside of that? And then the other work that my father did was a lot with the agricultural universities as part of the Green Revolution. You know, and uh -huh. and with, the, with the farmers' protests and the climate crisis, mm -hmm. you know, that question, uh, I mean, that eventually, in one sense, sustainably speaking, that Green Revolution was a disaster. Uh, but it, it prompted my father to do a whole bunch of work in the 70s imagining cities that would be ecological and sustainable and you know animal focused mm -hmm. with with food security and I, and i think while he was of course a high modernist you know planning everything mm -hmm. uh, it was all his vision uh, but the question of the climate crisis is you know there cannot be a bigger yeah. question today so, well, there were there were people of their times, uh, and the time the real issue at that time was uh, food security. Yeah, I and remember. so that uh, that's what he was focusing on. And my father, in my uh, we growing up in Delhi, uh, and Chanigar is near a lot of areas. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, so right uh, in the middle. Yeah, and we were in the middle of the growing slums. And yeah. uh, that was something he was very concerned about. In fact, he he asked uh, the DDA to give some plots to uh, to the, the School of Planning and Architecture, and let you know they were uh, tearing up the slums whole thing. 
mm. and try, building these tenements for people uh, far away. And he said, well, let, uh, let some students design some, uh, uh, some relevant architecture for, for these people, something that using the local materials and you know, functional buildings. Right, right, right. So they were both people of their time. They saw the social issues and they, they tried to work. I don't think my father had much success with that, with the DDA. They <laughs> but uh, it's, yeah. But did you go to SPA often with him? I mean, I'm trying to get into, because all they were the, both academics also. Yeah, yeah, I was there all the time, but I was, uh, and, but the reason I was there all the time, this is interesting, uh -huh. is because of the gas prices. Um, they put us in a local school. My sisters did very well there. I didn't. Uh, I didn't get along with the. I don't know what the problem was. I, you know, growing up, you have your little growing pains, and so they put me in a in Springdale School, which was kind of far. Mm. And my father said, "Okay, I'll drive you." Mm. And my sister was at SPA. She was at SPA for about two and a half, three years. Then she went to England. Mm. Um, so the, they are. I mean. I would have to drive her to SPA and then go to school and then the car would come pick me up and then take me to SPA and then we would wait for our father to finish. And mm. so that's why I was in SPA, not so much to learn about. I see you hanging out, waiting for him. <laughs> hanging out, <laughs> waiting for him. <laughs> yes. So, so did he have a fierce reputation as portrayed in Annie gives them those ones? <laughs> Yes, he did. But uh, uh, I think you talk to his student. He didn't. My father did not suffer fools lightly, mm -hmm. and he wanted commitment. Mm -hmm. And so, if you're not, um, you know, committed to the work, uh, he he didn't have much patience with you. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, there was that famous glass door. As soon, mm -hmm. well, the, he he became uh, full time. They, they didn't want practicing architects there. You either taught there. That's why I was asking you about Chandigarh. Hmm. You either taught there or you practiced. You couldn't do it. Yeah, then yeah, they, yeah. Is that how the, it was in Chandigarh? Similarly in Chandigarh, yeah, yeah. Well, they, I think it was sort of falling apart a little bit and the minister asked him to take over. And that's uh -huh. and my father said, only if you give me full power and I can also continue my practice. Yeah. And so that's what he did. And the first thing he did was put a glass door. So anybody, the only way you could enter the school was coming up these steps and then you had to pass this glass door. So if anybody was late, he <laughs> saw them. But it, as this one, <laughs> one student said, it worked both ways because uh, it, it also meant he was accessible. Right, right, and right. he really was. I mean, he would take these students, he would spend the night three, four days at Fatabur Sikri talking about the architecture, showing, you know, sketching, and uh, he was a wonderful draftsman. My sister figured this out. She was an architect, and she, real, you know, in England, he had to work, uh, he worked for, for the Ministry of Works, or they yeah, used to call yeah. it Ministry of Sharks. <laughs> he, he planned so he planned the city of Durham actually uh -huh, I see. he did pencil drawings but uh, to make extra money he would do private architect uh, renderings architectural renderings and perspective drawings for private mm -hmm. architects and um, so that's uh, what he uh, uh, that's where he developed his draftsmanship he was very precise and my mm -hmm. sister who was is an architect I mean she really appreciated that yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that, that generation knew how to draft and yes. how to write. I mean, now nobody can do it. Uh, that was a requirement to be able yes. to handle the 2 edge pencil. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. In fact, I think one of the uh, uh, students uh, brought that up, the pencil, and the yeah. way it had to be sharpened a certain yes, way. Yes, yes, yes. A certain way yes. it had to be sharpened. <laughs> yes. Did he feel nostalgic about all this towards the end of his life? I mean, since he basically lived in the U.S. Uh, in the end, did he talk about uh, 60s, 70s India? Or did he like, well, that's been there. You know, months were pretty much, uh, I think it was a loss for him. But uh, um, my parents were very much move, ahead, move on type of people. Mm -hmm. um, and you just moved on to the next phase of your life. And the next phase was his art and making sure his family was fine, making sure his wife was taken care of. 
Um, so that's that's what he did in my house. Um, you know, he he went back to his Bombay life. It was a very chaotic life. I mean, there were just there were seven children. Father was the British were harassing them because the father had been arrested, and um, so uh, you know he would talk about that a lot. The he Bombay did, times. Uh, yeah, he my parents didn't talk too much about their creative work with us, so it was left Why not? to us to find. You know. I to this day don't know. <laughs> did your parent, did your father talk a lot about his work to you? You couldn't shut him up, you know. Really? Yeah. They talked to each other. Really? They wouldn't, yeah. They were just too much in love with each other. <laughs> well, they were sort of whispering at each other, <laughs> but it was mainly about their work. I mean, it's not <laughs> yeah, they were quite secretive about their work. But he loved to take me to the sites with him. Mm. He would take me to his work sites with him. And especially as I got older, uh, I saw a lot of the exhibition work sites, I go see. to cottage industry. Even he was involved in the cooperative movement. We would go to Super Bazaar. He mm. designed the, you know, helped work on the Super Bazaars. Yeah. Um, I actually went to a school where he was working when uh, on the school while I was there. Mm -hmm. So. I mean, mm -hmm. it was being created right in front of me. But he would not talk about the why or the wherefore of uh, why he was doing it a certain way or, uh, no, see. he didn't talk much about that. And what about your mother? Did, did she take you to the, I don't know, production sites or whatever? Not at all. She herself didn't go <laughs> to the production <laughs> site. <laughs> 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 Not at all. Uh, she would even tell me when a book was published. Somebody say, "Oh, did you read your mother's new book?" And I'd call her oh, up and I'd say, "Why did you not?" Tell me? <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> and, and they just sort of look at each other and smile. <laughs> and then a copy would arrive in the mail with a signature, you know, to the, to the daughter. <laughs> That's funny. That is so funny. <laughs> well, he started opening up more, I think, as um, he as he knew he was going. He started, he knew I was the one that had to take care of everything here. And so he started opening up more about things. But uh, um, I think my sister in India, um, she was able to catalog all his work. We have a spreadsheet of all his work. Mm -hmm. I was able to, and my sister in England and I were able to catalog all my mother's works. And James yeah. Ivory was able to help me with a lot of the movie, you know, the tracking down different things. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, you know. So, you what are your plans? You have these two big legacies, <laughs> huge. Yes. <laughs> well, it's it's a work in progress. Yeah. It's a work in progress. We, I have an agent, my mother's works. And yeah, of course. Well, your yes. mother's work is, yeah, okay, go on, sorry. Yeah, I mean, but we go on from there. And so I've been reading the earlier books, which I think would make wonderful series. So we'll, we'll see mm -hmm. um, with that. And with my father's, I think the art, I would like to start thinking about it. Yeah. But I think you should make a movie about the life of your parents their life and story. I mean, it just is, uh, it sounds like a Ruth Pravar Jhabbala novel, you know, that entire <laughs> story. <laughs> well, things keep reaching out to us from the past. Uh, so with our father, the, uh, you know, his plans and his works, and then now somebody is uh, doing a, uh, a book on architecture and she wanted to know about Kirorimal College. I, I didn't quite get an answer to my question. So how come Nehru wanted Chhatris on Ashoka Hotel, but didn't mind a completely modern city in Chandigarh? You know, I yeah. just think that from my understanding, I, I find that very amazing that he would want Chhatris in Ashoka. Because he was a committed modernist. He, all, you know, all the projects that I know and all the architects he commissioned all over through my father's connections, et cetera, et cetera. They're all modernist structures. 
and Ashoka Hotel was reviled in Chandigarh. It was like a laughing well, stock. That, that's what he wanted. Well, yeah. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> Maybe somebody told him to stick to what he knew best and uh, not and well, <laughs> Nehru maybe my father. Said, yeah, we, we needed a modernist. So yeah, maybe he straightened <laughs> him out. But he yeah. got straightened out. But you know, Kabuse was picked for the project in 1952. So yes. yeah. Nehru was committed to modernism yeah. big time. Yeah, I don't understand uh, this they disconnect. Have had some yeah. some falling there's some Delhi politics involved, I can tell, you know, it's here because yeah. Delhi yeah. is such a, <laughs> you know. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, it couldn't, it could have just Nehru, but uh, that, uh, that's what uh, I, that was our story as to why he didn't work so well with Nehru, because he was pretty frank about that. He just didn't like sham stuff. He said, we have to build what is functional for us. In yeah. fact, he used to come down really hard on the students. Yeah. You know, they were copying Richard Neutra and the foliage was California foliage. He said, yeah. you know, what is this? The, uh, you know, uh, you are building a house in Darya Ganj with this foliage. Why are you putting the, put a cow, put some garbage. This is what you need <laughs> for the rendering. <laughs> put some cow and garbage. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but you must have had all kinds of people come to your house, no? I mean, uh... yes, uh, yeah, we had um, a very, you know, uh, Satish Kujral was a very good friend. Uh, um, Indar Kujral was his contract. IK, oh yeah, and IK, IK Gujral did. gave him a medal or something didn't he, he did he gave Made him a big uh, architect of the year in yeah. 1996 <laughs> as prime minister as having prime... a prime minister of all of two minutes <laughs> that's right <laughs> quickly gave him a <laughs> but so, what, what 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 is your do you feel uh, ambiguity about your uh, location in the us or you're very content with that for many many years i did I didn't become a citizen until 2003 or four, something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, my father saw the writing on the wall with the 911 attacks. He said, you better change. So uh, I did that. I mean, I had a green card for a long time mm -hmm. and those were permanent mm -hmm. until one day I sat down to read the newspaper. I had a day off from work I said, and it said that tomorrow your green card is not going to be valid anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you remember that time and they changed yeah, yeah, it had yeah. to be renewed every 10 years. And yeah. half of LA was standing in line at the <laughs> immigration <laughs> service the next day. So, uh, you know, slowly they were restricting immigration, you know, immigrants, what we could do. Yeah. So we did that. My father and I both changed citizenship. He was actually a US citizen when he passed away. Mm -hmm. Tell you the truth, what's going on in India now? I'm glad I don't live there. Mm. I, I just saw an inter, uh, you know, Stanford has a talk series and um, they had a talk with Nasiruddin Shah. Mm. And I mean, the way Muslims, anyone who's not Hindu is treated, I, I, can't, I can't live like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's very, very difficult. Yeah. And what happened with my brother-in-law? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sister she struggles working in that in that uh, atmosphere right. they make 10 uh, you know they make five strides of gain and then mm -hmm. they have to go go back i mean and what's happening in the school of architecture we have professor mahavir as the head of the school of architecture but the dean or somebody over him is has been appointed by modi oh really so yeah. that's yeah i i can't live like that so yeah. i'm actually i mean after the last election, I'm glad I, I live here rather than there because I, I think the same thing is happening in both places. It, we managed to avert it. Mm -hmm. And coming, uh, in fact, I was thinking of looking up the German consulate and getting an EU passport hmm. because I have that right. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but back to your question, going back to India, I have a lot of feeling, but I don't think I can live there again. Mm. Not the way things are going. What, what about you? I, I, 
you know, I have harbored deep ambiguity about this question for a long time. And like I told you, we still have this home in Chandigarh and I can't bring myself to sell it. Uh, but hard. now I don't recognize India. Now I don't. You know, the Modi India and the entire culture that has come with it, now I feel very distant from, 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 that, from, from that India. So now I feel... Uh, now this is my home for sure. You know, I'm all my work and career and my life is all over here. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to reinvent my relationship to India. You know, I'm trying to, uh, I'm, I'm working on a new history of the architecture of India so from a completely different perspective. Mm -hmm. And I plan to sort of reinvent my relationship to India, which ends about uh, 1750. Uh, and, and sort of, do so, do so you're you're talking more about the southern architecture then because there's not too much architecture from before well yeah 1750 so what yeah. architecture are you talking about the hindu or the everything everything, or both? everything. i'm talking about indus valley onwards i see yeah, yeah now that would be extremely interesting yeah so I, yeah. i'm a historian by training so I, and i've i've prepared a new history of the architecture of india i see and i'm trying to figure out a way to reinvent my relationship to India as, as a nostalgist, if you like. My, that's what my wife says. It's just nostalgic. Great. Okay. Uh, Firoza, thank, you. thank you so much for having this conversation with me. I'm so happy. <laughs> I don't happy. know how much you learned about my father. I, I, no, this was, a, I learned a lot. I knew our father, a lot about your father, but for, like you said, there's a whole generation you know, that doesn't remember that those people. And, but I'm also very, was very intrigued and I'm very interested in your relationship and your memory and how you are processing uh, this uh, legacy. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for inviting me. No, thank you for being here. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to Architecture Talk. This is your producer, Amelia Jarvanen. We hope you enjoyed the conversation, and if you did, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes or Spotify. We would also love to hear from you if you have any suggestions on new topics or guests. You can always reach out to us on our website, Facebook, or Instagram. Thanks again, and until next time, this is Architecture Talk.